What is up, YouTube? And welcome back to another episode of RimWorld. Getting ready for Wave 65, the uh, first boss version, anyway, with compressed raids. Um, just making sure all of my guys, where they've got shredded things and broken arms or missing arms. And these healer mech serums are fantastic. We get them from the legendary rewards. And it instant fixes those, grows them back an arm, grows them back a leg, whatever. Anything that's relevant that can't fix over time, that's permanent. Uh, I mean, a shredded lung like that lot from the Marauder as well. So you can see the the Marauder railgun is what's done all that damage. And that person there missing a toe. I mean, it's not really worth using for missing toes, but anyway. So the first reactor that we had, I did empty it. I emptied it to get the rods out that were worn and then of course we're now putting brand new ones in the ones that are worn will then be used to turn into plutonium to try and get some mox ones for the future these ones being put in now are brand new ones made by the automated system it's just standard uranium rods put all of those in 18 and then kick that back off giving us some more power again you can see the ppc is about 50 percent just under 50% so they are about ready to get boosted and this is what this reactor will do I think maybe I'm going to go for a third one but I will need to readjust the base slightly because they're not going to fit here so I'll probably need to build a bit more into the mountain and build a third one so we've got three reactors going uh, two turbines per reactor and see how we go there I can't imagine that I need more power than that and I can confirm that that gives me about 250,000 watts of excess power, which is definitely good enough to charge those PPCs ASAP. Here is one of the machines for the quest as well to do the research for. This is to process the plutonium and allows you to make the MOX fuel rods, which are the upgraded fuel rods. Um, there's a lot of sad people just looking over the stats here. You can see it's because pretty much their entire family has died. Um, yeah, that's... I mean, eight without a table. There you go. You can see I'm triggered. Eight without a table. They've got a f fantastic silver table with fan fancy seats. So if you eat without a table, that is a you problem, not a me problem. The food is in the fridge right next to that table, so you would literally have to walk past the table to eat it anywhere else. It makes no sense. That right-hand building that's very long, I'm just going to use for now for the plutonium. It is quite dangerous, and radiation sickness is a thing. You can see that coming as there already has it. Um, so I need to keep it out of the way. The plutonium is decayed in that machine over a period of, I think, six cycles in total. And then from there, you can then use it for the next stages. And then you can see I use some of the warning floors just around it to show that it is indeed uh, dangerous. Not that it does anything to the colonists, but it looks looks cool. Uh, they're still working away on it, as you can see. It's got it holds twelve, I believe, twelve rods uh, where there's plutonium to extract. So obviously the reactor holds eighteen. So you technically need two per reactor should you want to do it that way, but we're still researching it. We haven't actually finished it yet. Once we do, we can then build multiples. Um, the floors are being converted back into soil. Once that is finished, I will then replace the soil with tilled soil. As I mentioned, I think in the last episode, the tilled soil is the slowest form of ground floor that you can put down in this mod pack anyway. Um, and it's about 80, it's either 80 or 83 percent. That coupled with the then every one tile moats is the slowest we can make the kill box. Of course, you could uh, put down items like stones because they're slow to walk over as well, but that also counts as cover, and we don't want any cover. So the kill box has zero cover for the enemies. And it's as slow as I can make them, I believe. But I am open, of course, to options. Now, don't mention barbed wire if that is your thought. Because barbed wire, unfortunately, isn't slower than the 83% of the tilled soil. And it was at this point that we started researching the Liberator, also known as a nuclear bomb. 
There are two types of nuclear bombs in the Rimatronics. There is a high yield and a low yield. The high yield will wipe out the entire map if you launch it on yourself, which you can. It will wipe your map out pretty much 99% of it. The low yield would do the explosions about a quarter of the map. Of course, the high yield launch to any other tile on the world map will obliterate it, destroy it, and everything within it. Uh, it will also leave then, of course, Fallout, which will stay on the map for a fair few years. So be ready for that. And we have jumped ahead actually to wave 67. The wave 65, it was underwhelming, so I'm not too worried about it. 66, the same. 67, I'm not come back for that. I've just come back to show you. We've finally got this uh, set up to be working reasonably decent. So what's happening is both of those machines now are cremating the corpses and then they are also set to burn any armors or clothing that come off the corpses. The human meat that was farmed previously did work, but we've got so much now, about 20K. Uh, I've, I've stopped it for now because there's just no need. We've got like four or five thousand fine meals. So let's just see how this goes. Speeding that up to about 12 times, whatever it is, for your benefit, just to show you the process of the cemetery as it does indeed progress. And as the corpses are cremated, the cloves are dropped. The cloves then go into the same machine and are burnt away welcome back currently at wave 69 because of course we are and i am extending the base out the yellow there is for the base I, it, it's hideous um, but it was just while i was doing some math mathematics on the extension the idea is the at least the back left hand side of that extension will be for more reactors and this is for the mech link which is in the brain of our colonists currently McCannon. now that is to make some mechanoids which i will do and i'm interested in the paramedics as they're called the paramedics require high cores though the high cores are obtained by basically ripping the brain out of somebody else so that's what we're going to use the prisoners for they are currently blood banks but we're also going to sacrifice some of them to steal their brains we can then of course use them to make the paramedics you can see i've moved the marauders to the front the rail guns to the front so now when they shoot they will not be shooting through anything and therefore not causing any additional damage there isn't many slots left however the reason for that is because none of the guys now will be shooting their own guns they will be all on the avengers guns the mines now are fully automated. You can see there each of those squares next to them was the automations for the mines. So that will just continue to collect. Three nuclear silos there. Obviously not all kitted out. Uh, that one has five in and then the others I believe are empty. Again, high and low grain weapons. The high will annihilate the entire map. The low will take out about a quarter of the map, give or take. You don't really want to use a high on your own map. A, a low is okay, as long as it's like on the opposite side of the map. Uh, using a high on your map will, of course, practically obliterate it. There will be things that can survive. Um, barely, but yeah. So, with that in mind, we can see this psychic drone that's been annoying us for a very long time now didn't mention it because it's not it's just a move right what we can do is launch said nuclear warhead that new nuclear warhead will travel over and psychic drone no longer exists and everything on that map has been obliterated the green squares then remain as the fallout that can come over your map and if it does you will get a nuclear winter where it's just crops don't grow and people get um, radiation sickness from just being outside and it is likely to happen but to be honest I can't send out colonists to those locations to fix them for two reasons one is because it's too dangerous for the very small gaps between waves 
secondly, and actually more importantly, is that they can't be away from the cube for that long. That's other dance. You saw me dance in there with them. I had a quick dance myself. But yeah, the gold cube that's there, they can't be away from that for more than like half a day or they go into a murderous rage. And if they are in a caravan when that happens, they instantly die. Or at least you instantly lose them. So we, we can't leave the map, basically. Uh, so that's what I built nukes for. If you can't fix a problem, nuke it. A fun one there, so that'll give them a bit of a boost. Eight, eight mood boost there, that's good. Along with the droner that's now been destroyed, so everybody's everybody should be much happier. Nice, simple, automated thing there. That is for prosthesis. Now, I don't believe I've used them yet, and I don't actually think I ever do from the future here, but it's there, and the idea is that machine will always make sure that we have two ears, two eyes, a spine, a long, two legs, two arms in stock, so if anybody loses one and we don't have any other option, we can chuck on a bionic one, and they should be very happy to receive that. Moving up now to Cataphract Armour. It is very expensive and requires a lot of work. Um, our guys are mostly kitted out. The two vampire sanguifages, of course, will be wearing prestige variants, which is why I'm making two of those. And then the rest will just be wearing normal. Now, Cataphract Armour is about as far as you can get in terms of levels. There is one step above that, but we're way, 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 way far away from it at the minute because you've probably seen it in the mods already there is uh, godlike armor and weapons that we will get to but to do that we need to create antimatter dark matter and all this other stuff so for now cataphract armor is the best we can do we're making sure everybody's wearing that that can um, make sure they stay alive as you can see the research is almost finished a few of the items are greyed out because we can't learn them for two reasons. One is that we're missing the print, tech print, or it may be because we need the mechanator to research them or do something that they haven't yet done. Finally got round to starting the actual building at the back of the base as I planned out originally. All that yellow has been removed because it was just so bad on the eyes. You can see I've got four... Uh, turbines now that is the four that match the two generators the two nuclear reactors that we have I'm gonna chuck down some lights because everybody works better in the light this game is very much on that basis the robots also are dramatically increased if they are working in the light so get some lights down if you've got a big project of building or especially digging to do that will speed it up dramatically and again, once this area is dug out, this top left-hand corner is going to be where I rebuild the nuclear reactor room. The reactors uh, likely upgrade to a third as well, which will mean we need six of the turbines. And I think we normally manage with uh, a couple of the transformers per turbine. So you can upgrade them though, or, or turn them off. It don't matter. It's so there's a lot of digging to do, there's a lot of wall building to do. You can see that wall that's being built out there is plasti-steel. That is used just in case there will be any of the infestations that appear in that behind the base, because of course that is still more than capable of providing insect bases. Um, it'll give them something to chew on, and if they start chewing on my plasti-steel walls, I will of course have time then to get somebody there and stop them. From a bird's eye view, you can see I put down a few more of the auto motors as well. 12 now from, I believe we had 8 originally. Also the kill box, around where we have the base and the turrets, I've just put some black concrete cement floor down. It helps stop things from burn, it just looks cleaner. And it also makes sure that, again, no insects appear for no reasons. All of that needs digging out, but we'll have to just quickly go through and leave the odd square every sort of 10 or so blocks so that it doesn't collapse and squash whoever is doing it. Now, it likely will be the robots, but they can still die. And of course, if they do, then we have to use plastic seal and steel to fix them. So it's always a good idea to try and leave some structure in place so that the roofs don't collapse. 
we can then replace, put in the walls or put in the pillars to stop the building from collapsing down on me. So jump forward a couple of days, two and a half days-ish to be exact, to wave 70, which is a boss wave, but also to show you that we have, or I have, moved a lot of that over now the ppcs was just moving which the robots did and the uh, reactors too i do need to get them uh, in situ and then turned on to get the power going now there was a mistake i've made here and that is the fact that you saw that the reactors are moved but not turned on the ppcs have been moved and are all empty and we now have a wave a boss wave nevertheless coming in and we have no protection Yes, we have no kill box because we have no power. Therefore, we're going to have to fight these the old-fashioned way. One of our colonists is out, as you can see. Bonbon is in a death rest, so we haven't got Bonbon available to us either. And we've also lost some money for a mood, which they're always in. So we have two for, it looks like, five colonists available to fight back, plus uh, a child. Chrissy if needed, but as you just saw, thank gosh for the mortars. And that is wave 70 over. So although it looked like it was going to be an absolute mess, that's a polite way of saying it, uh, the mortars did as good there. And that's because we have 12 now. So when they rain down, and they're pretty accurate, um, when they rain down, they rain down with vengeance and they wiped out most of that wave. It looked like about 50%, which is standard practice. The reason I increased the amount of mortars is because with six, it was breaking the shields but not doing any damage. With 12, that means six break the shields and the other six do the damage. And it worked because they had shields and they got wiped out. Now we can sell some of our overzealous amounts of fabric that we do not need. And then another day or two later, we can now see we've set it up. So we have the containment room on that far right-hand side, the storage room next, the prison, a much larger one, because we need that for the blood and brains. Uh, the Rimatronics room is next to there. The racket you're hearing at the minute is all the radiation that the colonists are struggling to carry with to just get the stuff moved. It's only once, and then they can recover. And then, obviously, the PPCs was in the last room and fully charged with the two reactors. Again, upgraded the automotors, an extra couple there, and just fancied it up, made a floor around them and some fire poppers in case they get attacked, just to stop them from going crazy. Because if they do set on fire, they will explode quite significantly because they are full of the shells. And there's shells stored nearby as well. So if they go up, they go up with a huge bang. The TAC machines, the buildings that you can see where the radars are spinning around on the top from Rimatronics. I've built about seven of them because twice now I've had it where one's been destroyed and then all of your items don't work. All of your defense towers don't work. Because you need to have at least one TAC on the map somewhere in order for your towers to fire. So I've built, I think, five or six all over the place just so that they would all have to be wiped out for the enemy to actually take out my defences. These remaining low level but high-ish in plutonium fuel rods are just being now carried over to the new Rimatronics room away from where they were originally being processed. It is going to make our colonists poorly, but they will recover as long as it doesn't get to the fatal radiation levels. They will recover, and it's not going to get that lot, that high because I won't let it. And if it does, we can use a mm, healer mech serum to remove the radiation anyway. But I'm only going to do that in, in an emergency because they're better for growing arms and limbs and other things. And bring you back to the end of the episode off with yet another fire. You can see we are now on wave 72, and there is 125, so I've increased the amount of of course the stats are still increasing in terms of the compression of the raid look how fast they're moving that is disgusting crikey they are resurrecting and they are shielded you can see i am currently in the process of upgrading the killbox slightly just pushed it back 
And the idea is that where those obelisks are, at six on each side, so 12 in total, I am going to put another six behind each, so there'll be 24 in total. Yeah. Uh, they need upgrading. I'm not going to put any more testers down or anything. They're the only last resort things. I'm just going to double up the obelisks because they are much better, especially with the amount of shields that we're coming up against. But as you can see, the marauders are going batty with ease and then that ding ding noise is them resurrecting. So 125, but is actually 250. All of them are in. If, if you look in the top left hand corner, you can see them all in my uh, cemetery, which is annoying. Yeah, look at the state of it. And they do keep their armor, apparently, because their shields would have protected them, it seems. I'm not sure. Oh, no, they didn't have the acid defier thing is, so, yeah. Mill and death there. Why? Why did you die? What on earth did you get shot by? Ah, she went into a cube rage, uh, made a hostile, and the Tesla... Barbecuda. And this is the problem with the cube. Never mind. She's gone. That's our mech. Mechanator gone, though. We can take the mech link out and obviously put in somebody else. Not a problem. And I think the next person on the list for becoming a mechanator is probably going to be Joanne, I guess. Joanne Ward will be the mechanator. We'll see. Unless we can keep her alive. Better than this, anyway. We'll, we, we'll, we'll, we'll find out, right? And these guys remaining are really hard. It's really hard work. The uh, compress raiders are quite strong. But it's what we wanted, so we shall make do. And to be honest, if it's a raid where they go through the kill box, it's not too bad. Um, these are the ones where they scatter everywhere. And yes, I could stop it, uh, but I'm not going to because it gives it a bit of extra difficulty, which is always fun as long as we don't lose everybody. We are at time now, though, so I am going to end the episode here. Give them a chance to clean up and see what wave next is the one that has something useful or interesting to happen. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please click like. Any comments welcome. As always, take care. Goodbye.